ready for half time and if you have a blow dryer handy that would be a good thing to to uh, plug in and have ready colors today are thalo blue and ultramarine blue or any two different blue colors also raw sienna and ochre and greens so it can be a combination of two greens or if you only have one green we can make it into different greens just by adding a bit of ochre or by adding a bit of blue so you can always change things up make your own combination so feel free to have fun and play with colors at some point when mixing colors they may start to turn gray so it's interesting to practice and play with colors to see how far you can go before that happens so if that's been happening to you and you think oh what is going on i'm not mixing my colors right no it's absolutely right to play with the colors and discover what works and what doesn't watercolors can be tricky sometimes but they also are um, very forgiving in a lot of instances so so we just have a few more minutes before we start. Um, colors today, as I said, two different colors of blues, uh, a couple, couple of greens, ochre, and raw sienna, which is the color of um, terracotta pots. If you're wondering what color raw sienna is, it's sort of a red, a rusty color. Well, Kathy, what green would you say I have sap and I have hookers? Those are good. And either of those colors, if you add ochre to either one of them, or if you add water to either one of them, you'll have several different varieties of greens. So it's fun to, and if you add a little bit of blue, you get a totally different green. So those colors are, are great for what we're doing. So you'll want your two containers of water. One I like to keep clear, one I use for cleaning brushes. Sometimes I forget and they both end up dirty, but you know, if I need clear water, I try to remember to keep one clear. And some brushes, I have a fairly large brush. I call it a mop brush, it holds lots of water. I'm going to do the outside of this, this diagram today. And then I have several little ones. I have a zero, I have a one, I have a two, I have a three. So I may, you know, I'll, I'll let you know when I pick one up over the other. And I've also got my angle brush, which I like to use for lots of different, different projects. Um, your paper towel would be handy. And for those on a little bit early, we're going to do next week, we're going to do this, this fun little hedgehog. And we're going to do a seascape we're going to do this water with these waves in doing these waves we're going to use masking fluid there's a number of different names for masking fluid it's just a paint resist and i have mine in a jar some of you might have yours in a tube if you have yours in a jar like mine or a tube if you have a um um what's it called a toothpick a toothpick gives you really fine lines so if you want to between now and thursday dig up your masking fluid and uh, a toothpick then that would be good if you're going to use a brush like a paintbrush to do the masking fluid with soap your brush bristles first so that it doesn't damage right down to the steel holder part of your bristles. But in order to prevent that, a toothpick would work marvelously because then you can just throw it away when you're done. So, so that's what we're going to do with the masking fluid. So we want to leave those white spaces and that will help us with that. And I think we're just about time. So welcome, my name is Kathy. I'm the watercolor artist for today and I am going to teach um, the, the picture that's up on the screen 
It is the cottage plate. We're going to do the background and then we're going to paint that plate in the middle. So if you have a blow dryer handy, or if you don't, you have time to get that. So grab yourself a blow dryer and we'll just use that briefly. Paper towel, two containers of water. And then we'll just get into art mode. So welcome to the art class. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for blessing me with your presence. And you are a gift to me, believe it. And so we'll just take three deep breaths. And at the top of the breath, just hold your breath for a moment, just momentarily, and release fast or slow, that's up to you. And as you release, just drop those shoulders down. We get really tense and tight in here. I'll try to remind you during the class to just release this area, just take a deep breath. And I'd also like to remind you not to take it too seriously, it's just a piece of paper. So, so with that, we'll take a deep breath in, and hold it and release. And another deep breath in and hold it at the top and release. And one more deep breath in and hold it just for a second and release. Really drop those shoulders, give them a shake. Anything that's troubling you, just set it aside in the parking lot. Give yourself this gift of one hour of time so that you can focus on this project at hand. And so I think we have, um, we're a few minutes in. So those people that are coming, if um, I may do a recap of some of the things that we're doing just to catch some of those people up if they come in a little bit late, but we're going to go ahead. So we have our drawing. And with our drawing, we're going to, with a, with a larger brush and clear water, I'm just using clear water and a large brush. I'm going to wet my canvas, but I'm only going around the inner circle. I'm not going inside that circle. So I am wetting the two other outer circles and I'm going all the way up to the top corner, all the way down to the bottom corner, right to the sides. I'm wetting the whole thing, except that inner inside that circle. I'm not wetting that at all. So just take your time with this, have a look from the side and see if there's any spots that you missed. If you look from a side angle, you may see some dry spots. So just work with your brush to get all of that wet. We want this paint to really spread around and move. Thalo blue, if you're going to use thalo blue, it's a really strong, powerful, fun color. So again, just go back and just make sure you've got water so it's going to move. Now I'm on an easel, so it may move a little bit differently than if it was flat. But now I'm going to go ahead, this is wet on wet. So this is a wet canvas. I'm putting a wet brush in my phthalo blue and I'm touching it on my canvas. Look at that go, wow. Phthalo blue is such a strong color and it's taking over everything on there. Now I do want it to be all the way around my circle. So I'm just going to move it a little bit with my brush so I'm sure it goes all the way around that circle. So that was instant. That's a powerful, powerful color. It just takes over. I'm going to add a little bit more of it. Just let it, let it move. Okay. 
I'm just making sure that I've got it right to the sides, right around that circle. And if it's lighter, darker in spots, that's okay. This is not about perfection. This is just about getting some color on, having some fun in the background. And while that's still wet now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my second color. So there's no particular pattern. I'm just putting that other color on because my canvas is still wet, that's going to move. I'm not worried about it being perfect or even. I can turn it. I can let it flow a different way. I did rinse my brush and then I put on ultramarine blue which is a little bit darker, that's right. Okay, so we, so we, at this point, we have two different color blues on. They have blended and melded together a little bit. You can see I've got some differing colors, lighter and darker in spots. This is my background. I, I, I like that. I like that it looks different. I'm, I'm not looking for a really smooth, even coat. If you've attained that, and if yours is perfectly smooth and that's what you like, perfect, that's good. I'm, I'm quite content with it looking different in spots. So at this point, I'm going to mute my mic and blow dry this before I do anything else. And the only reason that I'm blow drying it, um, and very carefully I'm blow drying it, I'm holding the blow, uh, blow dryer a little distance away. The only reason that I am blow drying this is so that when I want to paint my center, I'm not getting blue on my sleeve or my arm. So let's go ahead and we'll dry that. Okay, so hopefully you have yours blown dry. And at this time, we're going to start to paint that little house in the center, or sorry, that's not, that's not true. We're going to paint this outer edge with raw sienna. So find your lines. We're going to leave a blue line in the center. So this is the outer circle that I'm painting. And I'm leaving that blue inner circle. So I'm with short feathery strokes. I'm just going around the outside of the inner circle and the outside of the outer circle. So we're painting on top of that blue. So you're not lifting off that blue. You're just setting the, this raw sienna on top of that color. So we're painting the outer edge of this plate. And if you need to move your canvas to get a different angle, that's fine.
And remember that watercolor is going to dry 20 to 30% lighter from when you put it on. So if you're finding that as you paint, where you painted in the beginning has lightened up, you can go back over and darken that up a little bit. Just add a little bit of fresh paint on top. And it may mean that you'll go around and do your entire circle twice. Now I'm going to mute again and blow dry this circle again, only for the reason that I don't want to put my arm on this fresh paint. So blow dry again, if you're able, if you're ready. Now some of my blue has gone inside around a little bit in the ring of my inner circle and I'm okay with that. It's not important that it's perfect. What I am going to start to do is paint my little house inside. I am leaving the outer shell of the building white. I'm at this point, I'm only painting the roof and I'm painting this in raw sienna. So there are three rooftops. There is one. If burnt sienna is going to look better for you, then use that. Mine is more of a red and it may look different on, like I said, in the camera. It's hard to tell sometimes with colors, but that's the color uh, from my tube is called raw sienna. So we're just going to paint the rooftops, not the building, just the rooftops. And I've gone to a zero brush because it's a fairly small area. And this is wet paint on dry. And if while you're painting your rooftop gets a little bigger, just try to have them balanced on both sides. And I'm going to take the same color and just do just a few little lines underneath at the bottom of the building. I'm just putting a few little markings, just disjointed little lines. Kathy, you also have a little window in your image. Do we put the uh, window in too? No, uh, not yet. Uh, we can put that in now if you're ready. So that window is ochre and it's not a complete window. So it's square across the top, straight down one side to indicate the window, but not a full window. We can also paint inside, but it's not the full window. We're just painting the look of a window. 
And while we've got this ochre on our brush, we're going to make some little shrubs just in front of our building, just a few little shrubs. And I like to stay with, with odd numbers, so I'm making three little shrubs. And then still with that ochre on my brush, I'm just going to do some little pathways just in the white, just down below. They just are little pathways or little patches of grass. And while you're working on that, but believe it or not, we are at half time. And so I'm going to read the reflections card. For one who finds joy within the self, rests satisfied within the self, and whose life is dedicated to self-realization, there remains nothing further for that person to accomplish. How has your quality of life improved since you began your self-care journey? Reflect on and celebrate your progress. And I'll just read that again. For one who finds joy within the self, rests satisfied within the self, and whose life is dedicated to self-realization, there remains nothing further for that person to accomplish. And the question to ask ourselves is how has our quality of life improved since we began our self-care journey? And reflect on that and celebrate your progress. So thank you for that self-realization, looking at ourselves internally, how we feel is so important. So now I'm going into my hooker's green and I'm going to make it a lighter version of hooker's green just by adding water. So I'm thinning it out and I'm going to start to create some bushes on the top above my roof, coming over the top and down the other side. And those bushes are going to continue right to the outside edge. It's a really light hooker's green. And hooker's green, another name for hooker's green, if you just have, um, if you don't have a name on your colors, is dark green. And I'm just adding water just to lighten it up. I'm coming right around the side of the building. It's right over the top, <clears throat> right over the top. So my, my roof starts to have a little more shape. Becomes a little more visible. And we'll let that dry a little bit and we'll come back to that. But with the same color, full strength this time with Booker's Green full strength. I'm going to create some evergreen trees at the side, just above my roof. They're fairly tall. So there's one, there's going to be a really skinny one down beside it, and a thicker one beside that one. They don't actually have a bottom. It's just the tops of the trees. And to balance out the house, I'm going to do another one on the other corner.
on the outside corner and one coming down a little bit further down the side. And in order to mix up some of these colors and add different variations to give the looks of different shrubs, I'm going to get sap green. And I'm going to run sap green down the side of the house, right down the corner, right along the wall, and underneath that latest tree that I put there. And then with the green and ochre, I'm making a mixture so that it's an olivey color. And across the front of my house, I'm going to put this olive green color. So you can see I'm just tapping that color on. I'm just tapping it on. Just touch my brush and lift it off. And then, as I said, I'm just tapping that across the front at the bottom. Some is a little bit lighter, some is a little bit darker. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's better if it's not. Now with that puddle that I've got, that's that olivey color, which is the hooker's green and the ochre mixed together. I'm going to add a little bit of that also in and around where I've got that little ochre line that I painted earlier. So I'm just adding this in. I'm just starting to build a little bit more grass in the yard at the cottage or in front of the cottage. Now keep in mind that what's going to really make this stand out is leaving some of this white. So I don't want the whole thing completely covered in. And one of the blues that I used in my background was ultramarine blue. So I'm going to put a little dab of ultramarine blue on my palette. And I'm going to mix a little bit of ochre with that. And I get a different olivey color. And I'm going to run that olivey color down the other side of the house, right to the outside blue. So now my house has a nice, or my cottage has a nice frame to it. Yeah, it's funny the colors that when you start to blend and mix what they make. So ultramarine blue and ochre makes an olivey green color. So it's olivey green, but it's darker than if I mixed ochre and green. I'm coming back to that straight green, ochre's green. I'm going to start to make some little grasses just coming up little tiny grasses just coming up onto the house. So not a lot, not to overdo it, but a few coming up. And then I can actually add a little row of that dark green down below where there was a little bit of white. I can add a little bit of dark. So I'm just padding a few dark lines. And I can add some little tiny grasses coming up on the outer edges, just a few near the bottom here, just a few, just to give a little bit of life there. Still leaving that white. So have some fun with it. Give it a life of its own, your own creation. That's fine.
So there's no door on the front. So this is the back of our building. And in order to pull in some of the blue from outside, from the outside ring, we need to add a little bit of blue somewhere in our picture. And so I'm going to put some blue. So I'm using ultramarine blue. And I'm going to put a little bit of blue in some of my shrubs. So I'm just adding that little bit of blue just here and there, not to overdo, but just a little bit to pull that blue from outside into the picture. And it just adds a little bit of depth to the picture. Now my bushes on top of the house, I'd like them to look a little more full. They look pretty distant. And I'd like to bring them in a little bit in the picture. So with my hookers green, just watered down just a little bit. I'm going to start to just add a little bit of color on top of what's already there. Just to bring that a little bit closer visually. Shoulders down. Remember, it's just a piece of paper. You've got the diagram. You can draw it again. You can redo this. You can do this in different colors. This doesn't have to be the colors that I've chosen. It, you could make it blue, more blue. You could make it purple. It, it would be entirely up to you. But what's left is to decide where are you going to put your artist signature on this. And I think I, on my original, I put my artist signature on the outside in the the frame around the plate, but I think I'm actually going to sign inside on the inside of the plate. So it's going to have to be very small. That's okay. That's up to you. And if for whatever reason you put that on there and you don't like that on there, you can put some other colors on top of that and decide a different spot. So we can change our mind and do whatever we like with this. Now that those trees up above are a little bit drier, I can come back in with another green and I can add just a little bit more texture. Just for a little more depth in the background. And that's up to you if you want to do that or not. Or if you'd like more more gr uh, grasses in the front, you can add that right to the outer circle. That's up to you. And so that's a picture within a picture. So I hope you enjoyed that. And that's what we can do in one hour. Actually, less than one hour. Thanks. Bye now.